everyone it's Kathy and you're back here on my YouTube channel Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that you will find the video informative and that it will um, stimulate you to want to create something beautiful as well. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Many of you know that I am a stamping up uh, independent stamping up demonstrator and I'm here in the United States uh, and I live in the beautiful state of North Carolina and I just want to welcome you in. If you're new to my channel or if you've just been coming in and peeking around every so often and watching my videos please 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 hit the subscribe button I'm working really hard to grow my channel and in the YouTube world the more subscribers you have the more they push your videos to be seen which helps me grow my channel which helps me in turn be able to bring y'all more um, informative videos like the one that I'm going to do today so thanks again for tuning in if you want to get notifications every time I put a video up it's just a little notification notification to let you know that I have something new. Ring that bell and choose all. Okay, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First, I want to tell you I'm working out of the new annual catalog. I cannot open this until um, May the 3rd when it goes live, but I am here to tell you I am so impressed with some of the items in this one. I can show you because as a demonstrator, I was able to pre-order one of the perks of being a demonstrator if you're interested in doing that you don't have to do what I do you can be your own best customer but if you want to make a little extra change and have fun in the process this is a great way to do it um, but anyway I was able to pre-order this uh, bundle called um, cup of tea it is or tea bouquet I believe is what it's called it is absolutely stunning you get a stamp set cup of tea they're photopolymer. They are beautiful images. I love, love, love it. You also get the teacup dies, which are equally as beautiful. And I have one of them out. So let me drop that one back in. And you get this beautiful uh, paper, designer series paper called Tea Bouquet. Look at this paper. It is stunning. I mean, you've got so many of the new colors, the um, Orchid Oasis, the Strawberry Sorbet, um, Strawberry, Sweet Sorbet. It reminds me of strawberries. That's the color that it looks like. You, all, you've got all these teapots. Um, look at this beautiful lemon, and the crushed curry goes beautiful with that. Um, I am seeing some of the... Um, fresh freesia in here and the fresh freesia goes so well with this new in color this is the orchid oasis is that not stunning and we're going to make the base of our card out of that today all right what we're doing is if you remember me showing you this little hexacon pop-up card i've seen these done on other youtube channels using a temp uh not a template i'm sorry using a die well i thought you know, how many times will I make this card? Do I really want to spend, you know, $40, $45 for a die that does this? So I did some investigating, and after much ado, I did find a video that showed me how to do this. Now, you can alter this a little bit if you like. Uh, this was my prototype. I made it out of plain white cardstock. I did some stamping. Um, I used some designer series paper that's actually retiring. And this was my my little prototype so what is so great about this it folds and it will fit in a six by six envelope and yes if you don't if you can't buy a six by six envelope i have a video that i just put up showing you how you can make one so you can look for that as well um also this particular card is going to take in knowing how to measure. I have another video up that shows you how to break your uh, one inch down into sixteenths, eighths, and quarters, uh, as well as halves. So that is a half an inch. Within that half an inch, you have all these different measurements. So this is a reference, and if you haven't joined our Facebook group, please go over to Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin' on Facebook and request to join that group. And all of the uh, PDFs and everything that I do will be listed there under files. So that way, if you're interested in anything that I'm doing or any of the videos that I do, you can always find them there and you can find the tutorials to go with them. All right, with all that being said, I'm going to move this out of our way. 
along with that beautiful paper because we don't need that just yet what we need to concentrate on is our card base so I may end up breaking this up into a couple of different videos just for the fact that this is going to be a little bit long of a video so what we're going to do first is we're just going to cut this down like we're making an A2 size card so put your 11 inch uh, side up to the top of your trimmer bring it over to five and a half and give it give it a slice just like that then you're going to turn this and put it at um, four and one fourth so all you're doing is cutting cutting your paper in half and then in half again so let's just go ahead and cut that now we have these two pieces this is going to make the base of our card but we got to do some scoring but before we do that we're going to need two more pieces that is one and three fourths and you're going to need two of them one and three fourths and this is going to meet need to be by six so i'm going to put both of these pieces together and slide them in and come up and slice now we need to score these so let, since we have these already on the trimmer and i'll tell you what instead of doing it on the trimmer i think i'm going to grab my scoreboard um, if you have this trimmer, you can do all your scoring and everything right here. You do not need to have a separate scoreboard. But if you don't and you already have a scoreboard, you can very well use it as, as well. So I'm going to just go ahead and grab my scoreboard. And this is the Simply Scored, and this is Stamping Up Scoreboard, and I love, love, love let me move some stuff out of my way up here so I can get this onto my work surface. I want y'all to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to move some of my feet. Up here to the top. There we go. Now I've got a nice solid surface to sit this on and we're ready to score. So here are our pieces that we need to score. That is the one best one and three fourths by six. And we need to score this piece at one and seven eighths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would be that last mark before you get to two if you break down into um, eights. If it's broke down into sixteenths, it's going to be next to the last mark. But on this, it's going to be right there. So one and seven eighths. Then we're going to come over to four and one eighth. And then we're going to come all the way down. You know I cut these wrong. Uh, okay. Okay, folks, I told you wrong on those that I said they were by six. That was a mistake on my part. They are six and a half. So I am going to recut two strips that is one and three quarters by one and three quarters. And then we're going to put our arm out on our trimmer and take this to six and a half and we're going to cut them. They should have been six and a half, not six. So that was my mistake. So six and a half, that's six, six and a quarter, six and a half is right there. So I'm going to close it down and slice. Now that should work better. Now back to our scoreboard just goes to show no matter who you are no matter even if you have a YouTube channel crafting mistakes happen do not let those throw you for a loop and make you give up on a project it's just paper put it back uh, put some more paper in your trimmer and cut it again I always say try everything out on some scrap paper or paper that you don't like and then if you mess it up it's no love loss you can throw it out and keep on getting up all right we're going to go back in and we're going to do this at one and seven eighths I'm going with the small side of my stylist one and seven eighths 
we're gonna do um, four and an eighth and six. When I got to that six and I didn't have that half an inch tab right there, that's when I knew that something was definitely off. So one and seven eighths, four and an eighth, and six. All right, so now we're gonna put these in on the five and a half side, and we're gonna score at a half an inch, two inches, three and a half, and five. So there's what we have on that one. We're going to do the same thing with this piece. We're going to put it in and score at a half, at two, at three and a half, and at five. Now all of our scoring is done, so we can go ahead and move our scoreboard out of our way. And now we need to do a little bit of fancy footwork on these two pieces. What we need to do is measure both of them. Well, you, know, you can measure one and do it and cut it. And I'm going to show you how to do that if you feel good. If you don't feel good at doing that, then by all means, um, just uh, do them individually. All right. I'm going to come down under that first score line. You see where this score line is? I'm going to come in underneath that score line at an inch. And I'm going to make a tick right there. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to come in an inch and I'm going to go in this direction the same way I did the other one. And I'm going to make a score mark right there. Then I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to come in at an inch, making sure you're measuring from on the score line. That will be important. So one inch and tick mark. And I'm going to turn it. And one inch and a tick mark. So now what we're going to do is this score line right here, not the small one, but the next one up, we are going to take those tick marks and we're going to connect them. So connect it to the edge of this with your ruler. Draw a line. Do the same thing over here. Find that tick mark, it's right there. Pivot. And then draw your draw your line. And you're gonna do that on both sides of this piece. So uh, and you're gonna do it on this this score line up here. Just like that. So what you're gonna do is connect those dots again. You can see your dot right there. Lay that out, and you want to make sure you're to the edge of that and on that tick mark. Just like that. Turn it, and you're going to do the same thing over here. Go to the tick mark, put that up, and then draw your line. Now, what I like to do to make it easier, I like to just line these up, hold them very, very tight together, and do my snipping all at one time. So all I'm going to do is cut away those triangles. All the way around. Just snip them away. That's all you need to do. Then that will leave you with two pieces that look like this. Let's go ahead and fold and burnish all of our score lines now. And 
and you should have something that looks about like that when you're done. I, I always think it looks like one of those stand and stuff tacos with tabs. <laughs> I think it's so cute. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to burnish these edges. And while I'm doing that, I think I'll pull over those other two pieces because they will connect in a few minutes. And let's go ahead and burnish these. Just like that. When you are burnishing your sides down, make sure your pieces are nice and straight because that is crucial when you're building a 3D project like this. You want to make sure that your edges are edge to edge, and if they're not, then manipulate it and then burnish it down. Just that simple. All right. The next thing we need to do is establish what is going to be your front and what is going to be your back. This will go together with these two pieces, the big flat pieces will glue together like that, but let's not do that quite yet. Decide what you want for your front and what's your back. You might ask, well, why does that matter? It will matter when you start putting it together. So I'm going to put an F on this one and I'm going to put a B on that one. That way I know that this is going to be my back piece and this is going to be my front. And I know where I put these that's going to be my top. So what I want to do now is we are going to put a slit halfway uh, in this piece here. And you say, okay, well how are we going to do that? We're going to use our ruler. We know that this piece is from the score line from this score line down to the end, it's one and a half. So we know that it is, um, let's come down to about here. We got about three and a quarter. So three and a quarter would be, eh, maybe about there. We're gonna eyeball that. We're gonna eyeball center. Let's, let's use our center. Let's use our center. All right, I'm just going to do an eyeball center, and I think right about here, and I want it to be about a half an inch. So I'm just drawing a line. Now I know that's my front, and now I'm going to turn this one around, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to eyeball center using my ruler, and I'm going to draw a line. Mm. So we're going to go from there to there. Actually, you know what? It looks like the line needs to go down just a little bit. So let's let's just get this good eraser. I'm going to erase those marks because I want them to come down toward the front a little bit more than what I had them. So I'm going to come down to about, let's pull that back so I can better see exactly what I'm working with. So now we'll put the zero right about there. And now I'm just going to draw that half an inch like that. That's much better. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And you can measure from side to side if you like. Totally up to you. And I'm just going to make my mark there. looks good. Now what you want to do is fold this out completely flat, both pieces, and we are going to use our ruler and a little blade. If you have if you have a finger blade, you can use that. That's what I like to use. If you have just a regular craft knife, that'll work. But what you want to do, let me grab my I 
have another mat that I like to put under here. And this was a Dollar Tree mat. So if I feel like if I cut into this one, it's no big deal. Whereas my big one, um, I paid quite a bit for it and I don't want to, I don't want to tear it or mess it up. So I am using this little mat to go under and I'm just going to slice and slice and slice. Make sure I've got an opening and I do. Then I'm going to bring over the back piece and I'm going to do the same thing. We are just going to make a slice. Make sure it's open and it looks good. Then I'm going to take my eraser just to clean that up and I'm going to take and erase that off. And then that just cleans up that pencil mark so it's not, it, it keeps it from looking dirty. So there we go. We got that done. So again, we know this is the front. So this is where we need to go in and cut some of our little pieces. So I've got these scrap pieces over here and th this is going to work perfect for that. Um, actually, this one right here. We need half inch strips. So I'm going to cut two half inch strips and then we're going to cut our pieces off of that. So that's a half an inch and one more half inch. And we're going to need one and three quarters. No, I'm sorry. Let's do the two and a half first. We need two of them that are two and a half. So I'm going to line that up at the top of my trimmer at two and a half. And slice. Move it over to two and a half. And slice. And then we're going to score these at a half an inch. So I'm just going to bring it back a half an inch and give that a score. And put that at two. And score. Now those pieces are ready to go onto our card. But we also need one that is one and a half, I mean that's a half an inch by three and a half. So let's cut this one at three and a half. We don't have to score this or anything, just lay it to the side. And then we need one more piece that is one and a half. So this is our shortest piece. We don't need to do anything but cut it. And there we go. All right, I think we're all done cutting and all of these measurements do not stress over the measurements. They're going to be in the description below. So everything will be there for you. All right, the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and fold back my score lines on this piece. Now these are going to go in those slits that we just made. So what you want to do is turn them over and we're going to put some um, two-sided tape and I'm using the Stamping Ups um, tear and tape. Any type of um, two-sided tape will work. You could use seal, you could use um, your, um, you could use glue if you wanted to. You could definitely use glue. It's totally up to you. I think this is just a neat way of doing it. I'm going to burnish that and then I'm going to put another piece in the middle after I lift those up. Just like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this piece while well, I've got my tape on my hand. That's the best time to put your tape on here is while you've got everything in your hand. 
that works even better all right and then we're going to put this right here go ahead and pick that off of there And then another piece right in the middle. And now we can lift those pieces up. Now I should have waited and put my tape on before I've got them in there. But it's okay because this right here is our front. So we are going to come up from the bottom. Hmm. I know I can't get that in from the top because I've already taken my stuff. This will work. Pull it up so that you have just a tiny bit of that sticking up. And you want to bend that back because where this is going to need to go is on this piece down here. So straighten everything up. Make sure that's nice and even. Look at your other side and make sure you've got just a tiny bit sticking out. And then what you want to do is fold that down and then fold this piece onto it. Just like that. Now when that pulls, that's going to sit up in there just like that. And this gives you a place to put some of your pretties. So remember, this is our front. All right, so now we're going to take that back piece and we're going to do the same identical thing. We are going to slide this in from under here. And we're going to fold that piece back. Let's make sure we got nice and even good little piece sticking up looks perfect hold that down just like that and fold this back onto it very simple way of putting in your strips that are going to be support strips as well as where we put our um, our pieces our little pop-up pieces so we are getting there y'all this is coming together beautifully now you know we got this piece here this is going to be like a t-bar so what i'm going to do is i'm going to lay this on my grid mat and i'm looking for that center which is right there so i'm going to use some liquid glue for this and i'm just going to put some right here in the middle just like that and then i'm going to lay this I'm going to lay this right into that glue. I'm lining it back up on my mat to make sure I got that nice and straight. That looks pretty good. Now where I put this together, that's going to be my back and this is going to be my front. So you want those raw edges to the back. So this is going to go in, this is going to actually go in just like this, right in the center of your card so at this point I'm going to do liquid glue and I'm going to put liquid glue all over this piece just like this and then I'm going to take this t-bar and I want to sit that down so it's right in the middle just like that and then I'm going to put glue on the on the back of it And then I'm going to set these two pieces together. I'm looking at bottom and sides, making sure everything is even. Top. Smush that glue so that it adheres really nice right there at the top. If you have some oozing, just wipe it off. So there is the base of our card. The next thing that we need to do 
is put our base pieces on. Now the base pieces go on very, very simply. You are going to have a piece for back here and you are going to have a piece for here. And make sure that your tabs are going in the opposite direction. So you're going to have this piece with your half inch going to your right and make sure this piece is going with the half inch is to the left. So when you sit them on, they are going to sit just like that. Now you want to put your tabs to the inside. So make sure your tabs go to the inside. We're not gluing anything down yet. We're just giving it a good trial run. And that's going to go inside like that. And then everything is going to adhere beautifully. But you got to remember that this is going to this is going to be up a little bit higher um, at the top. So I suggest I think it's better to glue your tabs at the bottom first and you'll see why. Um, let's make sure everything is going to fold like it should. That's looking good. Alright, so this is your back and this is your front. So we are going to Let's just go ahead and put some sticky tape on these. I know this is our front. I don't think I'm going to use sticky tape. I think I'm going to glue it. So this bottom is going to go on top piece is going to go on just like that. So let's do our top piece first. I'm going to do my bottom first. The bottom needs to sit flush. The top one's going to have a little bit of a gap in it. So let's do the bottom first. Get that on there really good and then all we're going to do is bend everything forward bringing that tab back and now all you want to do is lay that tab or lay this top into that tab just like that now when you bring that up you're going to have that gap that you need between the two pieces and I lost my tab out of there that's not good. Get back in there. If that happens to you, just pull your piece back. Feed this back through. this down like that. We might need a little bit more glue. Eh, maybe not. I'm going to burnish this really well. I don't know what caused my little piece to pop up, but if that happens to you, pull that piece back and go ahead and get that taken care of. So now we're ready to put this piece on. Now remember what I said about your um, you got your tab here, this little half inch tab. Make sure this one is going in this direction. So I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to put some glue on this bottom, the bottom part of our back. And I'm going to sit everything down into the glue just like that. You want to make sure you're not impeding the score line but you are over it mm 
And then we're going to bend this forward. Oops. You have to give wet glue a little bit of time and if you're not patient, you might want to use sticky tape. Because <laughs> that's exactly what happened to me. I should have used my tearing tape, but that's okay. We'll get this. All right, that is where that one goes. Now we can lay this down. And right there where our bee's at for our back, we can put some glue on that and fold this down. I'm going to use that bone folder just to really get that glue pushed out so it's very, very well adhered. Now all we have to do is put our glue on our tabs and glue that together and we have our mechanism made. I think I'm going to stop here and tomorrow's video we will decorate this. I think I think that would be a good starting, a good starting point. So what I'm going to do here is I went ahead and put glue on that tab. And I'm going to bring this right to it, making sure that my lines meet up perfectly. Hold it. Make sure the glue sets before you let it go. I'm going to go ahead and put, press it flat. Okay, so now the only thing we have left to do is to glue this piece down. And remember, everything folds, so you can fold this any way you want to. To put it together so I'm going to fold it I think I'm going to fold it with this going up that takes a little bit of the bulk out of there and all I'm going to do is put glue on that tab that little tab right there a little glue on it and then press it down in place and we will have the base of our card made and if you want to you could put a little clip on this, a paper clip or, um, you know, a little binder clip or whatever. I'm just going to hold it with my fingers for a few minutes. I'm going to take my bone folder and just kind of press everything out to even that glue. And then open it up. And we're going to press it. And there is our little hexagon. Um, pop-up card mechanism. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the video for today right here and tomorrow's video we will decorate it and I'll show you uh, some beautiful different ways and that's where we're going to be using our teacup, uh, a cup of tea and this uh, tea bouquet uh, designer series paper. So I think it's going to come together very cute. I can't wait to see how this turns out. Thanks so much for tuning in. As I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to your Father in Heaven. He is worthy. Until we craft again, God bless and keep you. Love you guys so much. Bye-bye.